and welcome to another Father Tim Talk. Today, as we're in the midst of the Christmas season, uh, either you may be watching before or after, I want to concentrate a little bit on the uh, infancy narratives or the stories of Jesus' birth that appear to us in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. Uh, and I kind of subtitled this, the, the Gospels Unpacked. Matthew and Luke are the only uh, Gospels that we have that tell the actual story of Christ's birth. And each of them have particular messages that they want to convey to their audience. Uh, scripture scholar Raymond Brown called the infancy narratives the Gospel in miniature. Uh, because if we have careful reading of these, we can tell uh, what Jesus' whole life was going to be about. If we first look at uh, Luke's Gospel, the one that we will probably hear or will be hearing, on Christmas, uh, it begins with a census of the whole world. Luke is writing to an audience that's composed of uh, people that were Gentile converts to Christianity, so therefore they didn't have a whole lot of familiarity with a lot of the Jewish traditions. So he sets it up uh, that this would encompass the whole world. Another interesting thing that Luke does is in his genealogy, tracing Jesus' roots, he traces this all the way back to Adam kind of signifying that Jesus' roots, uh, that all people share in Jesus' roots, uh, coming back to the first man of Adam. In Luke's Gospel, also, there's much more of an emphasis on Mary. We have the Annunciation uh, of the angel Gabriel to Mary, and then Mary goes to visit uh, Elizabeth, her kinswoman, and there's a real emphasis there on Mary. Uh, there's not much mention of Joseph at all in Luke. And Luke, again, in his gospel is kind of Jesus will be a special concern for the women. And so right from the very get-go, we have this uh, concern and this care and attention to Mary, uh, which signifies, you know, what Jesus' life will be dedicated to uh, in his later life, his uh, room for, uh, for women. The other thing in Luke's gospel that we also kind of know is that uh, when Jesus... There, when Mary and Joseph come to uh, Bethlehem, uh, they are rejected from the inn. There's no room for them in the inn. And this again kind of uh, foretells what Jesus' whole life will be like, that he's rejected by people in his life later on. Then when Mary does give birth, what do we find? We find Jesus was laid in the manger. Now, we all know around here in this rural area what a manger is. It's a feeding trough for animals. So in this act, uh, Luke is telling us, you know, that Jesus, even from the very beginning here, he offers him, himself as food for us. And that's what's going to be later in Luke's gospel when Jesus gives us his very self in the Eucharist is kind of foretold uh, or paid attention to in Luke's gospel first ones to receive the announcement of Christ's birth are the shepherds. Now shepherds in this time would have been outcasts. They were smelly, they were with their sheep, uh, and they were kind of those on the outcasts. Not too many people associated with them. Again, in Luke's gospel, who do we find Jesus going to? It's going to be those who are on the margins or kind of the outcasts of society. So this would be, again, what uh, Luke's Jesus uh, is going out to the outcast. Uh, he makes a special emphasis to that point. Jesus is born in Bethlehem. Uh, David's city. Uh, and Bethlehem, the literal meaning of that is house of bread. So we know then that Jesus uh, is going to offer himself as bread for others. So in Luke's gospel, again, we get this uh, very kind of a, a notion of what his, Luke's Jesus is going to be like later in the gospel. He offers himself as food. He associates with the outcast. There's a special attention to women in Luke's gospel. And all this, again, is, is, you know, it's the nice story that we remember, but there's a lot of deeper meaning that we find in Luke's gospel. If we look at Matthew's gospel, on the other hand, Matthew is writing to a Jewish audience. They would be familiar with a lot of the things in Jewish tradition. Uh, the, these were Jewish converts to Christianity. In Matthew's gospel, we have a little bit more of an emphasis on Joseph. And this would have uh, picked up to the Jewish ears that Joseph from the Old Testament, the one who had the coat of many colors. And that Joseph also, uh, God appeared to Joseph 
Joseph of the Old Testament in dreams. In a similar way, in Matthew's Gospel, we have Joseph receiving a dream from an angel uh, that he should not fear taking Mary as his wife. Uh, that was the way that God also uh, spoke to Joseph in dreams. And later, when uh, um, Herod uh, tries to take the life of all the uh, newborn babies, this again would have conjured to mind uh, the, what Pharaoh had done earlier in their history. When he wanted to kill all the firstborn. And the, uh, the Jews, the, through the Passover, escaped that. Again, it was in a dream that God spoke to Joseph and told him to take Mary and Jesus and go into Egypt. Now, in looking at this again, Matthew wants to kind of establish Jesus uh, as the new Moses. This would have been very familiar to his Jewish audience. Uh, so that they go to Egypt to escape the, uh, the plight of the murdering of the newborns by King Herod. And then they obviously will then come back to Israel, to uh, uh, the land of uh, Jordan, and just as their ancestors did in the past in the original Passover. So in that way then Jesus can be seen as the new Moses. Uh, there's not much written in Matthew about the actual birth. Matthew is kind of concerned about some of these other details that we've looked at. Uh, it's interesting that uh, Matthew tells the story of the three wise men or the magi from the east. We might think that that would come from Luke with his concern for uh, those that are outside of the immediate area of what we now know as Israel. But I think this is Luke's nod then to saying, you know, that this is broader than just for the Jewish converts, that God is reaching out to all people. Uh, and uh, sort of a, a nod to the universality of Jesus. In um, Be Matthew also sets up his uh, scene in Bethlehem, similar to Luke, which would be the house of bread. Bethlehem was David's city. So if we look at these uh, infancy narratives, as I say, only appearing in Matthew and Luke, we get some idea of the import of some of these various events, what the authors or the evangelists are trying to tell us about what Jesus' future will be like.